Welcome back. So, so we are talking about distribution semantics. So, in in this fourth lecture and the fifth lecture of this week, we'll talk about another very interesting idea that is word embeddings that come from distribution semantics. Okay. So, what are word embeddings? Okay. So, when I'm talking about word embeddings, so they are like word vectors. So, uh, so the word vectors are nothing but simple vectors of vectors of weights. Okay. So, you are so we talked about these vectors right. So, you are having some dimensions and they are representation of words in these set of dimensions and they are various weights. So, now we also talked about this one hot encoding that is among the n dimensions only one dimension is one everything else is 0 and this dimension might correspond to the index of the particular word that I want to represent. Now, and we saw that if I if we are using one hot encoding I cannot co compute the similarity among words. So, if I have motel and hotel they will have one at different places and if I compute similarity if I do an and it will be 0. So, this is not uh, conducive to for uh, semantic similarity between words. So, now let us take a simple example. So, I have a vocabulary that contains only 5 words king, queen, man, woman and child. So, so I have a I have vectors in 5 dimension. So, I can encode queen like this. So, queen has a weight of 1 in the second dimension that correspond to the index of queen and it has weight 0 in other dimensions. And I cannot compute how similar king and queen are, how similar queen and child are by using this method. So, we cannot make any uh, meaningful comparison. We can only find if these two words are same. So, that is not very interesting. So, what happens in the distribution representation or so we also call it word embeddings that any word w i in my corpus is given a distributed representation okay, by an embeddings. So, I have a fixed dimension like d dimensional vector and I represent each word in these d dimensions and I will give them various weights and these weights are to be learnt by some method and we will talk about what will be the method by which I will learn these weights. So, idea is that each word in my vocabulary I will try to represent them in some fixed dimensions d. So, now so, so this is one idea. So, like I have the word linguistics and I can denote this word in some fixed dimension here d is 8. So, there are eight dimensions. So, they it has different weights in different dimensions and similarly all the words will be represented similarly. They have different weights in these eight dimensions. So, so what is my distributed representation? So, take a vector with several hundred dimensions. So, it can be 100, 50, 300, 1000. Now, each word is represented by a distribution of weights across these elements. So, each vector is nothing but a distribution of weights across these dimensions. So, what will happen? So, instead of a one to one mapping between an element in the vector and a word, you have a uh, distributed representation of each words and by using that you can cap capture similarity. So, whether two words are similar or not, if they have similar weights in uh, many dimensions then they will be similar and that is how I can capture similarity between words. Okay. And yeah, so we, we can say that each element in my vector or each dimension might contribute to the, to the definition of multiple words. So, what the dimensions might indicate? Okay, this is just an illustration, uh, this is not uh, a literal meaning. Okay. So, that is what you can uh, that is what can you can can help you to understand what are these dimensions. So, suppose all the dimensions in my distributed representation. I can label by some hypothetical uh, labels. Okay. So, my algorithm may not have some labels some very uh, good labels like that. It may not be possible to do that even manually, but this is simply for understanding that assume that so there are d dimensions assume that you can assign a label to the, these some topic some concept okay. like here my dimensions can be like royalty, masculine, feminine, age so on these are my dimensions and assume that the weights that each word is having in these dimensions 
correspond to how much that word is closer to that concept. So, for example, the word king, what how much it is closer to the concept of royalty. So, this king is very close to the concept of royalty, it has a high weight in this dimension 0.99 it is very close to masculine so it is has a high weight 0.99 but very small weight in feminine age suppose that a high weight means a uh, it's elder so it's 0.7 similarly for queen what will happen royalty will get a high weight yes but masculine and feminine will be just opposite and age can be again roughly 0.6 now take women and princess women will have very low weight in the in the case of royalty high weight in the case of feminine and princess will have a high weight in the case of royalty and high weight in the case of feminine and very low weight in the case of age. Now, this is simple simply for illustration. So, idea is that I am trying to represent all my words in some fixed dimensions and these dimensions are latent they might correspond to certain concepts a combination of concepts and so on that we may not know that the algorithm also does not assign. But we would assume that that these di dimensions correspond to some concepts, and now each word can be written as a distribution among these concepts. Okay, and then I can measure two words based on how much similar they are on various concepts. Now, this is the idea. Now, main question is how do I capture this representation? That how do I represent different words in this fixed dimension? So now we can see that so such a vector is representing the meaning in some abstract manner. So, now what is my uh, dimension size? So, my dimension d can be starting from 50 up to 1000 okay. and the my uh, focus is that the words that are similar in meaning they should have similar embeddings or similar representation. Now, if you know about uh, SVD single value de decomposition that is also a, some sort of embedding method that converts the vectors in some low dimensions. So, I will I'll encourage that you read about singular value decomposition also another another name for that is latent symmetry indexing, but I will just give you very briefly what is the idea of SVD. So, we talked about uh, these co-prince matrices. Okay. So, this is my matrix A. So, these are the target words, these are the context words okay. and this matrix has certain entries. Now, what is one problem with this matrix? This might be very high dimensional. So, each word might have a say 500 k dimension representation. So, what did, what is its co occurrence with different words and the, the words can be as number of words can be as high as 500 k and even more in some cases. So, now I want to give a low dimension representation a distributed representation. So, what will be the idea? So, I will use the theorem that any matrix A can be written as u sigma v transpose okay. and there are certain properties of these u sigma and v, but this sigma is a diagonal matrix and the entities are singular values. Okay. So, you can read about it what is this matrix particular decomposition for singular values. Now, once you have this matrix in this format, this is the same matrix. So, idea is that you take a k rank approximation. So, that means you have singular values, they are arranged in the decreasing order and you take only the top k singular values and you do that for all this u sigma and v. So, you are taking only top k entries. So, only the first k entries of u corresponding to top k singular values. So, that is u k sigma k v k transpose okay. and this is my k rank approximation of my matrix A. Okay. So, now this u will denote my low dimensional representation. So, earlier you might be in the same uh, dimension. So, you can be again in uh, 500 k dimension. Okay, 500,000, but suppose you 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 are trying to pick only 100, you will take only uh, first 100 dimensions from here. Okay, and this will be a low dimensional representation for u, v, and so on. So SVD is also one sort of 
uh, embedding. So each word you can embed in some uh, k dimensions by taking the top k singular values only. So, but we are not talking about SVD here, we will talk about the word vector method for computing this representation. So, now before I discuss what are the different tasks you can do with these word vectors, so sorry how do you compute these word vectors, let us see what why they are found to be very interesting in, in, in this domain and what are the different tasks they have been used in. So, what is we found that these representations are capturing some meaningful syntactic and sem semantic regularities in a very very simple manner. So, what is that? So, that is you can use the vector offsets to talk about uh, relation between words and ho how much two words uh, are similar compared to the other pair of words. So, for example, I want to capture the singular plural relationship between words like car and cars, boy and boys, bag and bags and so on. And suppose I do not know what are singular and plural words. So, can I capture that using word representation? So, what has been found? Suppose that for each vector x i, you uh, for each word i, you have vector x i. So, you can take the vector offsets and they will be coming out to be similar for uh, singular plural pair. So, that is if I try to compute x apple minus x apples, that is coming out to be very close to x car minus x cars similarly to x family minus x families and so on. So, that is I compute the vectors of these and if I take the vector offset apple minus apples has similar offset as car minus cars as family minus families and this is very very interesting. So, this was not something for which these vectors were trained for, but they are capturing this uh, regularity very uh, nicely. So, this will be like and 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 because they are capturing such regularities, they can be used for various reasoning tasks like analogy task, A is to B as C is to what. So, like man is to woman as uncle is to and you will answer aunt, but can my model answer that man I have given man woman pair and for the next pair the first word is uncle, what will be the next word, can you find out aunt. And that is what the word vectors how have we found to be very useful in, they can predict these uh, uh, analogic sort of tasks. And how do they do that? They just use the simple vector offset method. So, let us see one example. So, here, so this is the idea. So, I have my vectors denoted in a two dimensional plane. So, how do you come convert any say 100 dimensional vectors to a two dimensional representation? You can use principal component analysis, PCA, or some other methods to project them into some lower dimension. So, that is being done here. So, two dimensional representation. So, what we are seeing here? So, there is an offset between woman and man that is similar to what has been observed in uncle and aunt and king and queen and this is a very nice regularity. Similarly here for similar plural king to kings and queen to queens they are having similar offsets. So, you can use that for analogy testing. So, what is the analogy testing task? you are given a pair with a with a certain relation like France and Paris, what is the relation? So, Paris is the capital of France. Now, you are given various examples and you have to find out which of these examples exhibit the same relation. So, that is whether Italy Rome has this relation of capital and country, Japan Tokyo and Florida Tallahassee, which of these has the same relation. So, can my vector, vector representation uh, capture this. So, you are given one example, can you find out the other example. And so, similarly for big bigger, can you find out a small smaller, cold colder, quick quicker and Miami Florida, can you find out other examples, so on. And how do they do that? So, I have this task A is to B as C is to what. So, example is man is to woman as king is to sorry. Ha, man is to woman as king is to what and how will they do that? So, simple idea is take the vector offset between woman and man and add it to king. Okay. So, find out woman minus man add it to king, but how do you find out the word queen? In general it may not be an exact match. So, how do you find out what words are coming closer? So, 
this is the idea. So, I have A is to B as C is to what? Okay. So, so what will happen in my vector representation? A, B, and C. I want to find out what is the word D. So, what will I do? I have the vectors for each of the words. So, I will find out the offset W B minus W A add it to C. Now, I am trying to find out which vectors are similar to this. Okay. I have added this and where what are the vectors are similar to this one. And so, I will just find out uh, similarity of that to all the words W i in my corpus and I can also normalize it yes, w b minus w a plus w c. Okay. So, that this is normalized although this is not very important and you take the arc max over all w i in my corpus. So, all words have vectors. So, I find out which words are coming closure in this space. So, what is the closest word to by when I add this offset to this word and that is my answer. Okay. So, for example, if you do this here, so you will find that the word queen comes up and this has been shown in many different cases like country and capital vectors, China, Beijing, Russia, Moscow, Japan, Tokyo and the what you are seeing here, the offset between the vectors are very, very regular in all these cases and this is just coming out from the word vectors. And more questions like newspapers. So, New York and New York Times have simulation as Baltimore, Baltimore Sun, San Jose, San Jose Mercury, Mercury News and so on, various NBA teams, Detroit, Detroit Pistons and, and so on, airlines, Austria, Austrian Airlines, Belgium, Brussels Airlines and company executives. So, what you are seeing? It is capturing a generic relation also. In general, any relation that 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 can hold between two words. So, if you if you are finding out two words with one relation, you can find out some many other words that are having the same relation by simple this vector offset method. So, find out vector offset between pairs is it similar to the vector, vector offset of my initial example. So, this is the problem we also tackled in the case of uh, structured models of distribution semantics that is we were making the pair pattern matrix and then capturing the co-occurrences. In the, in the case of word vectors, even, you, even though you did not start by pairs and patterns, even the, though you, you find found out only the word embeddings, word vectors, this helped further in doing this task also and this was very uh, one of the very interesting aspects. Similarly here, you can do element, element wise addition. So, suppose you have the embedding for German, you have the embeddings for airlines. And if you add these two embeddings and find out words that are coming closer to, to the new vector now and you find out some very interesting words coming up like here, check plus currency and you find out words that are very close, Vietnam plus capital again words that are very close, German plus airlines, you find Lufthansa airline and Lufthansa carrier so on, Russian plus river you find words like Moscow, French plus actress and you find some French actresses and this was again some interesting aspect. So, you can have embedding of two words and you add these together, you find something that is some sort of composition of these two. It is not a generic method. So, this was coming out in some cases may not be true for all the cases, but even coming out for some cases was, was an interesting observation. So, now how do we capture these word vectors? How do we compute these word vectors? Now, basic idea is we will again go back to the co-occurrences, we will try to use co-occurrences. But instead of counting the co-occurrences from a corpus, what we will say? I am given a, a sentence, a word is there and the context is there. Try to predict the context from the word or the word from the context. And if you are not able to predict, try to update your weights and this will be the idea. Okay. You start with some initial vectors, using those vectors try to predict from the context what will be the target or from the target what will be the context, if it is not matching update your vectors. And so, all the codes uh, as well as the learned vectors are available here. So, you can actually download these and, and, 
and try to use them for many of your tasks also. But we will discuss how what are these word vectors and how do they come. So, in general there are two different variations of these models. So, that try to capture these word embeddings and they are called C B O W for continuous back of words model and script gram model. And let me just quickly explain what are these and we will discuss in detail in the next lecture. So, in continuous back of words model what you are doing? So, you are taking the context. So, you are focusing on the current word W T, you are taking the two previous words. So, it can be actually any number of previous words and two next words and you are trying to use those to predict the center word. So, using the context predict the, predict the target word or the center word. In the skip gram model what you are doing? You are using the center word and trying to predict the context words. So, there are two different ways of learning these embeddings. So, idea would be I will start with some initial vectors. Now, trying using the context vectors I will try to predict what is my center vector. If I am not finding the match I will update my uh, different vectors for center as well as the context and I will keep on doing that until I am able to predict with some high confidence or I am I am converging at certain point my vectors are not changing and these vectors that I am learning by this method will be my word vectors. Okay. And I do that slightly differently in both continuous back of words model and script gram model. So, in the next lecture what we will do we will discuss in detail how do we learn these vectors. Okay. Thank you.